the dignitaries to please come on stage to write the lamp. Professor V. R. Desai, Professor K. K. Bunt, and uh, esteemed faculty members, Professor Ashish Pandey, Professor Deepak Kare, and Professor Dhangaraj. Thank you so much. Now I would like to request our student to please uh, bring the bouquet of flowers. I would like to request Professor Ashish Pandey, head of the WRDM department, to please present the bouquet to our esteemed guest, Professor Desai, Director IT Dharwad. And Professor K. K. Pan, Director, IT Rupi. Thank you so much, Professor Pandey. And uh, before we begin today's lecture, I would like to request uh, Director Sir, Professor K. K. Pan, Sir, for his kind remark. So, very good morning to all of you. And uh, on behalf of IT Rudiki, it's my pleasure to welcome Professor Yar Desai, Director of IT Sarwar, who has come all the way from Sarwar to Rudiki. Despite this cold weather, you know the Karnataka weather is very good, and the weather in Rudiki for past one week. It was very chilly, but now it's better, a little bit sunny. And uh, I also congratulate the Department of Water Resource Development Management, the head of the party, for organizing this lecture on the memory of this what we call fourth year course study with the Padme Vision and which contributed a lot, right? Uh, in the area of supply chain management and also the conservation of water resources. So, my dear faculty, my students, dear students, uh, it's uh, really, you know, that whenever I speak, I just focus on three points, food, energy, and water. And that is, I call a nexus to SEW. This is a global issue in fact. Most of the time, when you see, right? In areas of healthcare, science, and engineering, whatever developments that have that have come, that is only either for the energy crisis management or for managing the top quality food, and more is on the quality of water management. So, supplying the clean water, potable water, to every citizen. It is still a challenge. And you see the demand of water is growing every year. And uh, just reading the document that by 2050, the demand will increase from 20% to 30%. So the growth of right, our demand of this clean water is a 
big challenge, right? And how to fulfill that demand? That's a challenge, in fact. If you recall your older days, right? When the people are more happy, I think, right? Now we have more and more luxuries, but still we are struggling with several environmental climatic issues, right? But in the ancient days, right? That time, the water, right, was precious and it was naturally clean water, potable water. Even the rainwater was very clean. And people used to collect this rainwater, right? What you call the hadis, right? Or, and the, the water from the different areas and collect into hadis. And they used to take bath, they used to even drink that water. Because with sunshine, all these, right, these natural phenomena that make the water potable. But nowadays, you see, we have a lot of contaminated water. Either it is through arsenic, chloride, right, or several other industrially created right, pollutants. And that has made the challenges for all of us. So how to provide the sustainable, right, clean energy technology, sustainable water, clean water, potable water to every Indian citizen or for all over the world, that's a huge challenge. You see the problems in South Africa, right? In Brazil, lot of these waterborne diseases are there. In India, also several parts, right? We are suffering from the fluoresces, arsenic created, right? Uh, skeletal disease, and all those issues are there. And so the conservation of water is very, very important. And at the same time, making the ecological balance is also very important. And that's why the G20 means the sustainability. The concept of sustainability, right? And through recyclability is very important. So whether you use the water in the hostel or right in different areas for different purpose, how that water can be recyclable for different purpose is also important. So rainwater harvesting is one of the important areas through which we can collect the water and then use it for different purposes. Even in IIT Rurki campus, although you know that here the groundwater is not at a far below level, but even then we need to look at how this water can be conserved. Afforestation is another important, right? You see the Joshi Mertor in Uttarakhand, lot of right, these kind of climatic changes which have made the right, several issues. And that is where we need to find out the solutions for these. As a scientist, as an engineer, it, it's a role of everybody to work on these problems and find the solution for these kind of pro like local problems, societal problems. And nowadays, you know, new education policy has already covered many things, and research is always a multidisciplinary approach. And we would like to see the solutions in the form of the practical or transferable impact of that whatever the thesis you are writing, whatever the research you are doing, the impact should be right seen. That's very important. So if your research work gives the right solution to the local or rural people, I think that is the need of the So we also look right forward in terms of the development of startup activities, these kind of water filters, which can right at a low cost. So that's why I use the word sustainable. So this is very important. I'm sure that the talk which will be given by Professor Deshai, right, in the area of this water harvesting, right, and through Indian knowledge system. You know that we already had those kind of traditional ancient, right, in the past. We were using the systems through which the water was conserved, right, or preserved. And that time, we were not using that, right, what about the hi-fi science and technology which we are using. These were the traditional method, and that used to give the clean water. So there is a need of the hour that we should utilize our ancient knowledge also, and also look forward how those right systems can be scientifically validated, and at the same time, how these technologies, right, by using those concepts, how the technologies or startups can be developed, which will help the society at an economical rate, right? So with these small words, right, the short word is, I wish you all the best. I wish all of you a bright future and wish you a very happy new year and Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Pan.
uh, for your kind remarks. Indeed, water, energy, food nexus uh, is a topic that we should all be, uh, you know, thinking about in our research. And I would like to request Professor Pang to please felicitate our guest and our speaker with the shawl. Professor Desai, if you could please come on stage. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Pan and Professor Desai. Professor Pan, thank you so much. We are so, uh, you know, so grateful to you for your support and for your presence. Next, I would like to continue this program by welcoming Professor Pandey to please uh, tell us more about the lecture. Hello. Uh, Director IIT Rurki, Director IIT Dharbar, Professor V. R. Desai and uh, keynote speaker of today's AN fourth AN Kosla in London lecture, uh, which we are conducting the memory of Padma Bhushan, Dr. A. N. Kosla. It's my proud privilege to tell something about the, the Dr. A. N. Kosla. So, uh, with the help of Dr. A. N. Kosla, the department of WRDM was established in 1955 as an Asian-African center to honor India's commitment at the Asian-African conference held at Bandung, Indonesia. Uh, the department offers application-based three PG programs, water resource development, irrigation water management, and drinking water sanitation, primarily for importing training to in-service engineers, and uh, scientists for obtaining training in the area of water resource development management. The department is having a balanced blend of academician and field engineers. The department provides consultation services for irrigation, drinking water, supply, flood control, drainage, groundwater. We are proud to say that uh, we are organizing this uh, Dr. Ian Khosla lecture in the memory of uh, Dr. Parambhushan, Dr. Ian Khosla. Uh, Dr. Khosla was born in 11 December 1892. He was an eminent Indian engineer and politician. He worked as Vice Chancellor of the University of Ruki from 1954 to 59. As a special secretary to the government of India during 53 to 54, he led the Indian delegation to the United Nations for the Indus water dispute with Pakistan. These negotiations led to the World Bank proposals, which later formed the basis of the water treaty between India and Pakistan. He was awarded the Padma Vibhushan in 1954 and Padma Vibhushan in 1977. He was a member of the Raisa from April 1958 to October 1959 and a member of the Planning Commission in 1959 in 1962. He was appointed the governor of Odisha. This appointment was a historic event for the engineers of this country. He was the 11th governor of Odisha during 1962 to 1968. Born in Jalandhar district of Punjab, he took up his early education in Punjab and obtained the BA with honors from DAV College in Lahore in 1912. He then joined the Thompson College of Civil Engineering, now IIT Roorkee, in 1913 and graduated in 1916 as a civil engineer. After graduation in 1916, he started his career with the irrigation branch of the Punjab Public Works Department in 1999, when the Indian Service of Engineers was established, he was assigned his first assignment for survey and investigation of Bhakra Dam project. He spent 18 months on deputation to Mesopotamia as a commission officer. During this period, he developed the Khosla disc for precision leveling across rivers and wide valleys. In 1931, engineer Khosla was deputed to 
United States and Europe to study soil reclamation, water logging, and the latest technology in dam design in 1936. He wrote his magnum opus, The Design of Vias on Permeable Foundation. This publication revolutionized the design of such structure in India and abroad. As an engineer, he served at the following prestigious position, like he was appointed the first chairman of the newly constituted Central Waterways Irrigation and Navigation Commission, now known as Central Water Commission in 1945. He's, he established the Central Water and Power Station at Khadagwasla, or they are known as Pune Research Center. He was instrumental on the construction of the Bhakra Dam, and later served as the chairman of the board of consultants of Bhakra Control Board until his commissioning in 1963. He undertook planning, design, and construction of Hirakut Dam, a major water resource project in India. He was the president of the Indian National Science Academy during 1961-62. He was instrumental in bringing about a number of agreements on negotiations for Indian water disputes with Pakistan. As educationist, educationist, he was the first Indian vice chancellor of the Thompson College of Civil Engineering, later IIT Rurki, and now uh, later, University of Rurki and now IIT Rurki. He was the founder of two specialized in department, that is Water Resource Development Training Center, now WRDM, and School of Research and Training Earthquake Engineering, which have made the University of Rurki internationally well known. Recognizing his contribution, the University of Rurki conferred the honorary DSC degree in him in 1959. He was also awarded DSC degree uh, on this COSA by uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute USA, as well as by various universities such as University of Punjab, University, Sambalpur University, Jadavpur University, and IIT Delhi. Government of India recognized his contribution and awarded the most prestigious Santi Suru Bhatnagar Prize in 1974. Momentous IIT Rurki has named one of the guest house in his memory as a Khosla International House and constituted Dr. Ian Khosla Award, which is well known to all of us. IIT Bhuvneshwar has also named one of its hostel as Ian Khosla Hall of Residence. He completed his life in 1984. The department of WRDF fees plowed in conducting this fourth series of Ian Khosla Endowment Lecture in his memory. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Pandey. We are indeed proud of our uh, legacy. And next, I would like to invite Professor Thangaraj to please present a brief bio of our keynote speaker. Thank you, Professor. Professor Vinkapaya R. Desai is an academician with more than 33 years of teaching experience, out of which 27 years in Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur. He obtained his bachelor degree in civil engineering in 1983 from BVB Engineering College, Bali, Karnataka. MTech degree in hydraulics and water resources engineering in 1986 from Karnataka Regional Engineering College, Suratkal. PhD in civil engineering in 1993 from Clemson University in South Carolina, USA. He joined IIT Karakpur Civil Engineering Department in 1994 after teaching in Dharwak, Hubali, Karnataka, as well as in Clemson University. He has co-authored a textbook on environmental hydrology and hydraulics, science publishes USA in 2006, co coordinated two ACT-sponsored short-term courses. Additionally, Sir has also served IIT Karakpur as coordinating model, drawing course coordinator, Students' Brotherhood Fund Committee Chairman, Ragvasha Vaibhok, Chairman and Dean of Engineering and Architecture. At national level, Professor Desai is now serving as NAC Academic Advisory Committee member, 
executive committee member for ACT and Visveswaraya Technological University in Belhavi, Karnataka, member board of governors for National Institute of Teacher, sorry, National Institute of Technical Teachers Training Research, Kolkata, and Indian Institute of Science Education and Research, Tirunelveli. His professional interests are in integrated watershed management, flood, drought mitigation and management, green infrastructure, that is climate resilient water and energy related infrastructure, promoting voluntarily afforestation through Indian knowledge systems on Varsha Nakshatrini and Vriksha Nakshatrini, as well as in linking modern science and technology with scientific and technical material available in classical Indian languages like Sam Sanskrit and Kannada. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Thangaraj. And now it is uh, time for the lecture that we have all been waiting for. And with pleasure, I would like to invite Professor Desai to please begin the lecture. Sir, आप कोई प्रकार करेंगे? Dhanyavad, that is thank you for uh, the introduction and uh, also inviting me for this uh, fourth A.N. Khosla Memorial uh, Endowment Lecture. You might have seen that the title was uh, starting with the word promotion and here it is starting with the word uh, scientific. Okay, so whatever uh, is this one, so I am, uh, I would like to bring it to your notice. The only, the science which is behind uh, most of the, this one, the traditional uh, knowledge system, which many times is either unexplained or or underexplained. So there is a need for us to that is, uh, explain it, the, understand the science behind it, and uh, link it to the modern uh, this one. Okay, and uh, so basically, uh, as I mentioned, as it was mentioned in my introduction, I have. Uh, been associated with uh, IIT Kharagpur since 1994. And I was uh, fortunate to teach a course on uh, integrated watershed management. And in my uh, very first uh, lecture, uh, introductory lecture, every year I used to start with uh, uh, Yajurveda Shanti Mantra, because we know that watershed management involves uh, conservation of three major natural resources. So that is uh, soil, water, vegetation. And uh, just I was uh, out of curiosity, I was trying to see whether there is any, some kind of a uh, linkage or some kind of uh, 
overlap as one between this Yajurveda Shanti Mantra and uh, this integrated watershed management. So to my guys, uh, in this Yajurveda, so please uh, don't mistake me in this lecture to be one religious lecture or something. This is fully scientific. With that first one, that's why I have, uh, I have added the word uh, scientific before uh, uh, this one, the topic which I gave to Professor Pandey. So uh, the word Shanti, Shanti is peace, which represents equilibrium or conservation. It may be qualitative conservation or quantitative conservation. So the word uh, Shanti is uh, uttered 14 times in the Sejurveda Shanti Mantra. And in that, uh, it is, you may be surprised to know that so these uh, uh, three, uh, this one, that is Prathivi Shanti, representing soil conservation. Prathivi is either soil or rock. Apa Shanti, representing water conservation. And Oshadha Shanti, representing vegetation conservation. We all know that the word Aushadha is the Indian word for medicine. Earlier, all the medicines were the plant-derived medicine. Uh, so, therefore, uh, the, the word uh, Oshadha or the Indian word for medicine has come from the Sanskrit word Oshadha. So, Prathivi Shanti, Apa Shanti, Oshadha Shanti, it comes exactly in the same order of uh, the three basic, uh, that is, uh, principles of conservation of natural resources, which are very vital for any uh, for conserving, the, for ensuring integrated watershed management. And as we all know, we are also here, uh, Dr. Lohani and many, uh, uh, Dr. P.C. Nayak uh, from uh, NIH, National Institute of Hydrology, are there. Okay, so this is a very uh, fun, that is also very, so. Now let us come to the potable water in the Indian traditional uh, knowledge system. And uh, here, Ayurveda, which is the science of uh, life. So it talks about uh, uh, rainwater, pure rainwater, which is free from uh, impurities such as heavy metals, suspended particles and pathogens. And so there was a terminology and it is called Gangambu. It is basically the water from Ganga. Ganga is uh, of course, in those days, it was very uh, fun, very uh, pristine and pure. So that's why this terminology, Gangambu, it doesn't only represent the water from the river uh, Ganga. It also uh, represents basically a pure water. And there is one uh, Sanskrit loka which says Jeevanam, that is life, Tarpanam, Vridhyam, Kadi, Buddhi, Prabodhanam, Tanvavyakta, Rasam, Vrishtam, Vrishta is that is sweet, uh, Sheetam, Laghu, Amrita, Upamam, Amrita, Upamam. So that is, it is almost, uh, that is, it is basically, it is, uh, Hridyam, it is uh, close to our heart. It is Radim, it is, it is the one which can uh, make us happy. It is the one which can uh, stimulate our intellect or buddhi. It can, one it will uh, nourish us with rasam. Vrishtam, it can provide the sweet uh, one. Sheetam, so that is the temperature of water will be slightly less than our uh, human body temperature. And then Lakhu Amrita Upam. So it is, uh, Basically, like a short nectar, that is as one. And also, it is say, uh, see, uh, we talked about the pure water, and then uh, now let us come to the way. What we popularly know as waste water. For that also, there is a terminology that is dushta jala. So dushta actually means uh, it is a cruel or uh, something like that. So dushta jala is that. Okay, so that is. Uh, so this has been quoted by uh, Suri. An expert Suri, 
And then uh, we all know that the uh, uh, the logo of uh, NIH, National Institute of Hydrology, Roorkee, which is uh, uh, right next to IIT uh, Roorkee, has this Apo Hishtha Mayo which means water can transform universe into a comfort zone. Only when there is a con uh, conservation of quality and quantity, so then it will be a uh, comfort zone. Otherwise, it can be uh, this one. It can be a zone of uh, misery or penury or whatever it is. Okay, that is. Uh, and uh, now let us come to Atharva Veda. Okay, so uh, Atharva Veda, Ayurveda is one of the Upavedas. Uh, Atharva Veda is the fourth and the last uh, of the uh, four Vedas, which are uh, the uh, possibly uh, uh, one of the oldest uh, literature in the human. History. So here it is says that Yantu Nadayo Varshantu Parjanya. That means let rivers uh, flow with uh, that is uh, uh, rainwater. Supipala o Shadayo Bhavan. That means uh, uh, by virtue of uh, the flow of uh, pure rainwater through the rivers, let there be abundant uh, vegetation. So that is what uh, this says. So therefore, so this kind of practice, which is essentially uh, water conservation, which is quality and uh, conservation of quality and quantity, which eventually results in uh, vegetation conservation and also the soil conservation. Of course, there are other natural resources like air quality conservation. All those things are also there. Okay, but three major resources. So, and here I would like to uh, also bring it to you the one uh, practice which is there in Sandhya Vanda. Sandhya, the word, uh, Sandhya comes from the Sanskrit word Sandhi or meeting. So whenever night meets with day or forenoon meets, meets with uh, afternoon or uh, the uh, day meets with night, that is in the evening, or the four night, that is the first half of the night meets with the uh, second half or the later half of the night. So that is that one. So that is called Sandhi and the goddess which uh, exists during this auspicious time, transition period basically. In a day, a day is 24 hours, so if we divide it into four quarters, so there will be four Sandhis. And of course the uh, night, uh, that is, uh, uh, that's why there is what we call Trikala Sandhya. So the night we are supposed to, uh, this one, that is we are supposed to rest. So that's why even if we are working uh, as well, so it, uh, our body needs rest. That is also is implied there. And here there is a uh, this one. There is a ritual of uh, smelling water in the Sandhya Vandana, just before Argya, which is offering pure water, because the sun, who is the uh, whether you call sun as a god or uh, this one, it's up to you. It's our you are the sun, or sun is you may call him a star or whatever it is, or a source of energy or whatever it is before offering three morsels of pure water to sun god during this either uh, 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 that is uh, sunrise time which is called suryodaya sandhya or madhyana which is called the midday this one or this one so that is uh, so this uh, ritual was there so here so that is uh, this one so uh, basically and here there is also another this one survey phalani shukino we use water for uh, bathing, thereby ensuring our uh, physical cleanliness. Of course, uh, more important is the mental and intellectual cleanliness, but our body should be physically clean also every day. So, therefore, this is uh, there is also a one called Sarves Thalani Chuchinogonto. That means let all uh, the places, places means all locations, any location in our body, in any corner of our body, let it be. So, these kinds of things are there. Now let us come to the ecological regions of India. And uh, here I would like to mention that Himalayas are the youngest and tallest mountain of the world. Other than Himalayas, no mountain range has peaks which have an elevation more than uh, say 7,000 uh, meters above mean sea level or say 7 kilometers above sea. The closest one is Aconcagua, the peak in uh, South American continent in Chile, the Andes Mountains, which comes very close, just for 
I think four meters uh, less than the uh, seven thousand meters, and that's why because of such a height, because it is the tallest mountain, it is also the youngest mountain. So therefore, there will be so many earthquakes in various uh, sun in and around uh, sun, and also another the, the that is the disadvantage part of it. But the advantage part of it is because of the height, so the water gets stored in the mountain ice caps. Hima Alay, Hima is no. Himalaya is house. That's how the word Himalaya has come. And here, that's why Himalaya is rightly called the third pole of the world. We already have North Pole and South Pole, which are definitely the colder region. So, and Himalaya, by virtue of it, it is a source for uh, uh, nine mighty rivers: Ganga, Yamuna, Sindhu on this side, uh, or Satluj, and uh, maybe on the other side, Mekong. and that say and so on so nine mighty rivers originate in and around us so basically here uh, in this so the ecological regions of india that is the uh, himalayas then the indo gangetic plain eastern himalayas western himalaya then har desert then uh, the uh, midlands central uh, highlands and western ghats then uh, the eastern ghats and uh, so there is also the uh, western ghats there is a swan So here, somewhere around Tirupati, the western Ghats and eastern Ghats meet, and then these are the two uh, islands. Then the northeastern uh, hill ranges in uh, Mizoram and uh, Tripura. Okay, so these are the Deccan Plateau. So these are the one, ecological regions, and uh, so because the uh, Indian plate pushed against the Eurasian plate, and then it resulted in uh, the uh, formation of uh, the youngest uh, and the this one uh, mountain range of Himalayas. and uh, here like let us come to the next one that is the materials and methods we uh, your uh, professor uh, our director iit rurki director professor pant also mentioned about the contamination due to arsenic chloride and uh, here the uh, due to uh, that is best management practices i would like to mention here the uh, the negev desert in israel okay that is uh, uh, this one which resulted in Uh, even the normal annual rainfall is so less that is 105 mm okay and so there they could uh, result they could move from uh, uh, samasya through samadhan to samruddhi samasya is problem samadhan is specification samruddhi is plethora in english it is the three letters starting with p problem specification plethora in indian language it is samasya samadhan samruddhi three uh, words which starts with the letter So, so here, uh, one. So therefore, uh, adopting such uh, best management practices like the drip irrigation and uh, so on. So basically, when we can uh, we can manage the demand side better only when we can ensure the supply side. So we need to minimize uh, the demand, maximize supply. Only then we can ensure uh, sustainability. As uh, our uh, uh, director, IIT Roorkee director, Professor Pant mentioned, and here, like. Uh, Uh, this one that is uh, the rooftop rainwater uh, just uh, so out of this i uh, out of uh, my own curiosity about uh, say 22 uh, years back i was uh, in uh, delhi working for a multinational company so that time out of my own curiosity i collected the water from the rooftop uh, in noida up in 2001 and got it uh, tested by my friend professor uh, babu j alapar an environmental engineering uh, professor in the civil engineering department and uh, interestingly it uh, met all the uh, this one that is the uh, qualities of uh, so now it also share with you like uh, here and uh, so in this case like say uh, the many times because of the moving to centralized system so people uh, take uh, water for granted so many of us we uh, see if uh, due to this lecture if at least few of you can ensure that is maximum cleanliness with minimum water in uh, our as uh, one at least i personally try to do it whenever i wash my hands i always just keep it a point uh, make it a point to see how much maximum cleanliness i can uh, achieve or i attain with uh, as minimum water as possible so if i can uh, this one uh, that is uh, uh, that is uh, um, i can uh, inspire at least some of them 
i think that it will be the success of uh, this lecture and then uh, the municipal waste water systems were introduced and then so all these problems we all know that is uh, and of course the best management practices you know we can mention the new water in singapore wherein the domestic waste water is clean to that is drinking water quality standards through membrane technique and then it is used as one of the four taps that is new water so in the world only w is capital there and uh, now coming to uh, this one so this is the west bengal uh, state of uh, india so this is the uh, region affected by arsenic and then similarly in the uh, neighboring bangladesh the nation of bangladesh so this is the severely affected uh, region and then moderately affected mildly affected this is in fact this is also much older this is the uh, i think uh, 2000 uh, no, 99 i believe and so now the 2001 so this was published in 2001 so it is already 21 plus years and you can uh, so therefore there is a need to uh, this one uh, uh, address these problems in an effective manner and then similarly fluoride you can see the whole lot of our country and this is also much uh, this one older uh, rose and uh, now the because of uh, many of our uh, unsustainable practices like so this is the people in one study so there might have been much more uh, this one uh, the milder regions might have converted to might have uh, turned into severe regions so therefore there is a need for each one of us to behave responsibly in a sustainable manner and uh, coming to this rainwater quality analysis as i mentioned i collected uh, this one like uh, and uh, so in the next table i so here i would like to mention about a water harvesting expert uh, vishwanath an activist from rainwater club of bangalore karnataka for propagating water harvesting uh, through uh, television commercials in the uh, this one that is the fm radio and uh, this one so pulse polio pro that is almost uh, he uh, advocates that we should conduct this uh, similar to the pulse polio program wherein we are able to almost eradicate polio like that now this is the rainwater quality analysis as you can see here so this is these are the parameters so 19 out of uh, almost i think uh, some uh, around the 30 plus parameters or so so are listed here and then so these are the results uh, the rainwater quality analysis and then these are the indian uh, uh, standards bureau of indian standards uh, one and then these are the uh ies limits as one and they can see in most of the cases it meets the requirement so therefore there is a need to that is uh, ensure the cleanliness of uh, rain water regulation so now coming to the concluding remarks like here uh, we are blessed with the traditional knowledge base on water harvesting uh, and so therefore we must use this knowledge similar to israel what they did was they developed uh, they revived the hebrew language and then uh, so uh, therefore most of the uh, this one experts in israel whether they are uh, civil engineers or uh, any other engineers or doctors or lawyers they use the old hebrew books and then through that they uh, on they uh, that is the, they conduct uh, modern experiments and then their satisfaction level is so uh, large many times it is at least Sixty uh, percent, and sometimes it is as high as ninety-five percent or so. So we need to learn from uh, this one. So the Sanskrit, uh, uh, this one, the Indian traditional knowledge system, mostly available in Sanskrit, and then few other classical languages also. So we need to develop that. And uh, coming to the the best management practices related to water through scientific promotion, and then uh, the fine blends can provide uh, lasting solution, cost-effective solutions. and uh, this water harvesting is becoming more and more relevant and uh, so proper storage uh, even in small quantities of flood waters can overcome the drinking or uh, other non potable water problems due, during the floods and this one i would like to here i would like to mention one thing malaria was naturally contained how it was naturally contained uh, it is uh, in bengal the, uh, there is what is there was a the malaria problem was initially noticed in uh, bengal uh, to the present day west bengal as well as bangladesh so because of the uh, the construction of railway lines to provide raw material cotton to the uh, mills in uh, lancashire in uh, uk 
so the railway lines were laid and many uh, these railway lines uh, they were laid in embankments so this laying of embankments resulted in a disconnect between the flood plains and the flood water earlier because there were no railway lines i'm talking of almost uh, uh, 175 years before almost uh, around the same time when this institute was started as a thompson college in uh, uh, 1847 so around that time only the railway lines were laid so that time what used to happen was along with the flood waters fish also used to uh, uh, that is uh, flow freely to the uh, flood plains and then fish used to feed on mosquito larvae so therefore malaria was naturally contained any insect has four stages in its life that is egg egg larva pupa insect so most of these mosquitoes were eaten during the larva stage only. and few of them could have been eaten in the pupa stage so malaria was naturally contained but when these railway lines were laid and uh, of course uh, they could have, it could have solved the problem had the railway lines uh, in embankments had there been these uh, fish ladders so that fish can uh, comfortably and easily move from uh, the stream channels to flood plains so that didn't happen because that uh, uh, designing of fish ladder uh, ladders needs more uh, technology more cost as well as uh, this one more uh, uh, risk uh, this one that is uh, it is more time consuming so that's why they were not done so therefore eventually it resulted in malaria problem which eventually spread into filaria dengue chikungunya and so on so uh, ronald ross worked on this and he got a nobel prize and so that is how these uh, water borne diseases or vector diseases started so therefore that is how important it is so to store these flood waters so which can overcome the problem now let us uh, these are some of the references and uh, i would like to uh, acknowledge uh, professor uh, uh, bj alapat uh, who helped me in the rainwater quality analysis from iit delhi civil engineering department and uh, if anybody has any question we can take and uh, we will move to the second part of this lecture i think we will move to this and so on. now this plants and stars that is vraksha is plants and nakshatra is uh, basically it is a star either a single star or a group of stars for promoting voluntary afforestation most of our problems are because of deforestation and here we know that uh, maintaining ecological balance is so important i already mentioned about oshadha uh, uh, shanti and it is also said that uh, Uh, in uh, there is another say in sanskrit which says vraksho rakshati rakshita one or those who protect plants or vegetation get protected that is the meaning so here like uh, the uh, vegetation cover is continuously decreasing and it has reached such a stage that among the nearly 200 nations bhutan is the only country which is carbon negative that means it can uh, uh, absorb all the carbon dioxide that is produced in bhutan so it has come to that stage and even in countries which have uh, some best management practices like arctic norway where in uh, uh, small ch kindergarten children are uh, taught how to grow and how to that is uh, nurture plants even in such a cold climate in the arctic uh, uh, european nation of norway or even this uh, alpine switzerland in switzerland so they mean they have minimized the uh, this one vehicular pollution and their army is the strongest which is trained in bicycles and then this mediterranean israel i mentioned about the uh, that is the drip irrigation and other this one equatorial singapore i mentioned about uh, new water wherein uh, the uh, domestic waste water is clean to this one so uh, this is uh, even they has not uh, help them made them into completely carbon negative or carbon neutral so uh, therefore the traditional indian knowledge system related to this vraksha nakshatra can provide a solution and uh, here like again uh, as I, i have already mentioned about this prathivi shanti apa shanti oshada shanti and the role of vegetation is well known and uh, here uh, the uh, there is a because of the uh, increase in deforestation decrease in vegetation cover there is a continuous uh, steady increase in the greenhouse gases uh, emission and uh, bhutan i already 
mentioned. And uh, so this Vraksha Nakshatrani is a Vraksha is precipitation, and Nakshatrani is the plural of Nakshatra, which is constellations. So uh, this can provide a, that is, it has the potential to provide solution to this problem. The, our final objective should be to achieve sustainable water as well as other ma major natural resources such as uh, soil and vegetation conservation to create additional carbon negative or carbon neutral regions or nations. And uh, here the uh, number 108 is very important in the Indian uh, this one, uh, tradition. And 108, you can write it as uh, the first three numbers, integers, 1, 2, 3 raised to the same power. That is 1 to the power 1, 2 to the power into 2 to the power 2, into 3 to the power 3, which is 1 into 4 into 27. It is 108. Here, 1 represents the one entire cycle, and the 4 represents the four quarters in each of uh, this constellation or nakshatra, and 27 represents the total number of uh, nakshatras or constellations. Which starts with uh, Ashwini and end in Revati, Ashwini, Bharani, Kritikaan. So this 12 solar months, which is uh, in fact just about uh, today is 19. So, uh, just four days back we had Makar Sankranti. That means the sun moved from uh, Dhanu or Sagittarius to that is Capricorn, Makar Rasha. So here uh, this one, so the, uh, they are the solar months, which are basically Rashi or zodiac, and in each solar month there are nine. Uh, uh, these uh, precipitation constellations. PC is an uh, abbreviation for precipitation constellation or uh, Varsha Nakshatra. There are two things. One is Raksha Nakshatra is plant constellation. Varsha Nakshatra is precipitation constellation. So that is uh, one. So, uh, and the, if you divide this 365.25 days, which is the duration of uh, uh, Earth's rotation, uh, one rotation around Sun, if you divide this by 108, what you get is 3.38, slightly less than 3.5. So therefore, if we ensure adequate uh, vegetation, then the, uh, uh, it should result in two uh, precipitations, any form of precipitation. It could be fog or mist or anything. And so therefore, it will, uh, it doesn't, uh, it will take out, totally take out the irrigation requirement. So this, uh, moisture, uh, atmospheric moisture, which results in soil moisture, it is automatically ensured. So that is uh, one. And uh, so it can meet the water requirements for agriculture, drinking. And we know that agriculture needs the highest uh, quantity, whereas drinking needs the highest quality, drinking and cooking. So it can meet all these two uh, one, extreme uh, one, uh, requirements in terms of water quality and water quantity. And uh, so this is just imagine the collective responsibility of uh, this one, each one of us are uh, some the collective responsibility of all of, all of us and the individual responsibility of each one of us for planting and preserving the vegetation. And this was happening till the middle of the, uh, this uh, 20th century, around uh, 1950 or so. Then uh, this one and uh, of course even scientists took around three to four decades uh, to even uh, acknowledge the existence of climate change. Now, of course, it is uh, so there is no so now. So, Narad Purana talks about this Raksha Nakshatra. It is from one of the all the way, son. and then so there uh, the, the English names are also given the next one. The corresponding the 27 plants and the uh, names, and then their botanical names are given this uh, annulus, and the the, uh, the common names are given, common English names are given, and then in the outer circle their botanical names are given. So these 12 represent the 12 solar months. So basically, this is Raksha, Nakshatra. Rashi Janmapatri, and this is how the, the birth chart in India, this one that is a, uh, uh, written. And here, so this is a plant constellation zodiac, sun, earth, Victoria. And we all know that sun is at the center of our uh, solar system, and sun is also at the center of the hydrologic cycle. And here, like, uh, so it starts with Ashwini is here, 
and see we are uh, this is december 22 is the uh, winter uh, solstice in the northern hemisphere shortest day and longest night and now we are somewhere here so each uh, this one so these are 27 into 4 so uh, uh, this one that is uh, uh, varsha nakshatras and here say we are uh, this one so this is these are the 12 uh, sun solar uh, uh, months or the zodiac aries that is mesha taurus rishabha gemini mithuna earth and so on and then these are the uh, 108 27 into 4 and then so in each month there are nine uh, precipitation constellations or uh, varsha nakshatras and then here so they for these uh, uh, 27 nakshatras the english names are given in this uh, annulus the english names of course i am also showing a table and then these are the plants and uh, so there uh, uh, this one that is uh, the of course uh, there is also can also write these plants as well as these uh, uh, this uh, constellations so they have their names in every language now so like here this is uh, v1 is the uh, plant or vegetation corresponding to the first nakshatra ashwini so this is bharani and then this is Kratika, so this is uh, Rohini, this is the uh, Jamun, this one, and then Raghashira, Aridra, then uh, Punarvaso, is, this is Bamboo, then Pusha, is, this is a people tree, then this is uh, Ashlesha, and then Magha, so this is the Banyan tree, and then this is Palash, uh, this one. So all these plants, uh, this one, so all the way up to, so this is 27, so this is the last one, so it starts with uh, this one. And uh, so this is the plant constellation ensemble. And uh, here in this table, so these are the plants or vegetation, which is indicated by P1 or V1. P1 is a plant number one, or V1 is a vraksha number two. Similarly, these are the 27 nakshatras or constellations, uh, their Sanskrit names. And these are their names in English. And these names are in all languages, whether it is Arabic or Mongolian or this one. And then, so these are the plant names. So these uh, uh, plant uh, names in Sanskrit, as you can see here. So this is uh, their plants botanical names for each of these 27. So they are here. Okay, so that is uh, this one. So, and as you can see here, constellation means it can be a single star, like say Magha. This is the 10th uh, constellation. And it has only one st uh, star that is regular. Whereas this Mula, which is the uh, this one 19th constellation it has a maximum of nine number of stars there is epsilon zeta eta theta iota kappa lambda mu and nu scorpionis okay so like that so and then these are the plants and here uh, you may son what is the uh, use of all this just uh, let me explain the logic here this is a a typical person walking on earth or a floor which is either elevated or depressed above or below the earth. Uh, so his or her height is within this uh, 2.6 meters. So uh, that person is indicated by uh, V1 or P1. V1 is Vyakti or P1 is that is uh, uh, that is person. And then next is V2 or P2. So this is uh, basically Vraksha. We know that after when we reach a height of say that is uh, uh, 4,500 meters or so, the vegetation tree cover, it uh, diminishes and then only few uh, sun will be, that is uh, grass and all will be. And then third is Varsha or precipitation, which is the height of clouds. So here this is the uh, maximum height of a tree is 120 meters, so that is indicated here. Everything is also brought to the same unit of kilometers. And then this uh, height of this uh, Precipitation or clouds is uh, anywhere between 11 to 15 kilometers. And do you know when we travel in uh, plane? So that is this one. And Nakshatra is a constellation which is at this one. The closest Nakshatra is Alpha Centaurus, which is 4.3 light years from Earth. So from there to lie, for light to travel, it uh, needs 4.3 years of time. So that is they are so far. So of course I have that's why I have shown this one. And uh, using these four nodes, we can have four triangles, V1, V2, N1, V1, V2, V3, like that. And potential benefit from each of these triangles, like say, 
voluntary afforestation. Suppose a person is linked to, uh, that is uh, uh, this one, V2. V2 is a plant and uh, both these are linked to uh, nakshatra or uh, N1. So here this, they form a triangle and triangle is the most stable structure. And like say, for example, my own as one, my, that is uh, uh, nakshatra is uh, Madha Regulus and the corresponding plant is uh, uh, Banyan tree. And whenever I see a banyan tree, I feel extremely happy. So these uh, vegetation, they are also called, they are the best stress busters. So if they are lush green, they will make us feel so happy. And if they are devoid of either water or sunlight or sun, so then they will be, uh, these plants will be, this one. so they will uh, remind us of our uh, responsibility of maintaining them by providing water or sunlight or whatever which is uh, resources which uh, in which they lack okay so like that so these are the other spatiotemporal study of seasonal precipitation constellation precipitation impact on vegetation conservation and precipitation impact on persons so like this so there is a there is a lot of work to be done and here uh, i have to say just some concluding remark so we need to climate change needs to be combated effectively and uh, this Varshan and Abraksha Nakshatra is one of the, it has the potential, uh, which is mentioned in Narad Puran. And then other traditional knowledge, like say, for example, in every Christmas home, uh, mostly in the Northern Hemisphere, because Christmas happens on 25th December, which is just three days after uh, the uh, winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. So in every Christmas home, a casuarina tree is grown as a Christmas tree. So that is a tradition of uh, the promoting vegetation. Similarly, in all the, uh, this one, uh, the mosques, the uh, tropical moss, neem tree, which is the best natural antiseptic. Okay, so that is grown. And uh, in all the Hindu and Buddhist temples, this Ashwatha, Vata and Ashwatha Raksha, they are grown, which give uh, what this, uh, which release a little amount of, uh, Oxygen even in the night, in the absence of sunlight. So that is this one. So such traditions are there in all uh, uh, this one, uh, faiths, all religions. So we need to practice this so that eventually we are able to maintain that uh, vegetation cover. In the modern practices, I al already mentioned about Norway, then uh, Germany, which is systematically shifting totally to renewable energy by closing all the nuclear power plants. Germany has the highest environmental awareness. This uh, I mentioned about Switzerland, then uh, Israel's drip irrigation in Negev Desert, and uh, this one the and Singapore. Another thing, what they have done is they have totally frozen the number of vehicles. A person wants to who wants to buy a new vehicle in Singapore is extremely difficult. He or she needs to properly justify it, and uh, so that uh, uh, because their public transport system is so reliable and all. So, can the, he or she needs to give a plan as to how he or she is going to dispose of the existing vehicle, if at all he or she has one. So, all this is one, and then it is uh, strictly implemented with the cooperation of uh, the authority government agencies like Air Quality Management uh, Authority, Traffic Management Authority, or even the uh, the funding agencies for buying the new vehicle and so on. So, therefore, we need to. Uh, that is uh, so these are some of the best practices okay? and these are some of the references uh, of course uh, as you can see here few references are there in uh, hindi and that is these two are in hindi and then uh, yeah three three are in hindi and then of course uh, the this one so this is an english uh, article written on basics of panchanga which is the indian almanac that is uh, vara tithi vara is a day tithi is a lunar day then uh, nakshatra is constellation, yoga is a benefit state, and karana, two karanas constitute. Karana is actually, it's a, its literal meaning is year. Two karanas constitute a lunar day. So like that. So basics of Panchanga is written by a chartered engineer based in Chennai, Narsimha Rao. So this is, uh, so this is what I wanted to share with you. And uh, if any one of you have any questions, I would like to. You can, uh, if you know your uh, date and time of, date, time and place of birth, I encourage you to just uh, uh, Google uh, in the internet, find out the 
corresponding Raksha Nakshatra and then you can definitely get this one. At least you can draw it in your wherever you stay, whether it is hostel room or this one. Then eventually once it gets bigger, you can transfer the same plant to a, a public garden and then you can buy a new one after getting. So like that, so it is, it will make us feel happy and it will also result in uh, the conservation of uh, one of the major natural resources like the vegetation and uh, so on. So, Dhanna, what to uh, IIT Roorkee in general and water resources development in manner? Management department in general, Professor Ashish Pandey in particular, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Professor Desai. Now I would like to invite uh, and uh, request Professor Pandey to please present a token of remembrance to uh, the keynote speaker, Professor Desai. Sir. And I would like to invite all the esteemed faculty members uh, for a photograph. Please. Please. My humble request to all the faculty members please come for a good photograph. Professor Kangaraj. Thank you, uh, all the faculty members, and uh, we would like uh, to invite Professor Khare for a vote of thanks. So, it's my proud privilege to propose a formal vote of thanks. Uh, first of all, I'm really very much thankful to Professor Desai, the Director IT Dharva, who has come all the way from Dharva and delivered a very thought-provoking, illuminating lecture on the most one of the most important topics of the country and the globe that scientific promotion of water harvesting and <clears throat> voluntary afforestation through traditional Indian knowledge system. We are really very much thankful to you, sir, for a very nice lecture where you have very, in the simple way, you have explained that how the traditional knowledge can be used for water harvesting and afforestation. The, you have given the good example of the our even the shanti part that the how this <coughs> land water and the <coughs> vegetation they are important and the <coughs> use we can make for the conservation 
the as you mentioned the vrakshya rakshiti rakshitam as you were also involved i more than two decades so i was also involved i have been involved in water harvest so in i was at indor there we coined this jalam rakshiti rakshitam as the dharma rakshiti rakshitam aap dharm ki raksha kare similarly jal jalam rakshiti rakshitam that aap jal ki raksha kare to jal aapki raksha karega so these are the things which can really help and propagate the motivate the masses to join this campaign so as uh, <clears throat> these are one of the most important uh, system to provide to support the country in water management effective water management so thank you very much sir once again i am thankful to our director professor kamal kishor pant who has been always a source of inspiration for such type of technical activities and giving blessings to us thank you very much sir i am thankful to the faculty and scientists of other the nih and the faculty of this department and the other department Mr. Pravin Kumar, <coughs> Lohani Sir, Naik Sir, and others who have come and joined this lecture and praised the occasion. I am thankful to the staff and the faculty and the staff of the WRDA who have wholeheartedly supported this event for the success of this event. The students. i am also thankful to the media who has given due coverage for this organization of this course in the sorry this lecture and the uh, last but not the least i am thankful to all who have directly or indirectly been involved and supported for the successful organization of this course thank you very much 